The whole process maturity framework concept started when Watts Humphrey was at IBM and was assigned to come up with a way to improve software development processes across the whole company. Watts went to Phil Crosby's Quality College. Phil had written a book called Quality is Free uh, and studied his methods for improving quality and learned about Phil's process maturity grid which said you can take various improved practices and run them up through sort of five levels of maturity. Uh, starting from sort of, you sort of understand a little bit about it, you've heard about it all the way up through true mastery. And Watts was flying back up to IBM corporate and as he changed planes in the Atlanta airport, he was sitting there and he started realizing this isn't going to work. That's exactly what we've been doing for the last 30 years and it just doesn't work. And that's, that's when the maturity model was born. Now the Atlanta airport is a horrible place for anything to be born. But nevertheless, Watts said, you know, there's a set of problems in the way and we have to solve those problems in a particular order. And the first problem is that, at least in software, uh, people are given new practices constantly, you know, development practices, new testing practices but they're giving commitments they can't possibly meet, schedules that are impossible, and the first thing they sacrifice are these new practices. They don't have time to learn how to use them appropriately and they just toss them out. And so he realized until I solve that problem, I can't, I can't make any real improvements. Uh, and that's when the whole concept for the process maturity framework sort of fell together in his head that the first thing he had to do is get control of management, get management to control commitments and get control over work products. And from that insight, then, he was able to build the other levels. He really wanted to get the statistical process control and continuous improvement practices that Stewart and Deming had, uh, had really worked so effectively uh, with. He wanted to get those installed in software engineering, but realized he had to solve these other problems first. So Watts came up with the process maturity framework. He came to the SEI in 1986 when he retired from IBM. And he spent five years at SEI sort of developing the framework. He wrote a book called Managing the Software Process, became very popular. People started using the framework, but there really wasn't a formal model. So Watts in 1990 asked me to, to come replace him as he stepped back towards retirement and take his position over. And so when I got to the SEI in 1991, there was the collection of practices that the SEI had been putting together in all its various programs and Watts framework. So I pulled together a team, we uh, worked hard for five months and produced the capability maturity model, the first version. DOD began using this in contracts because what they wanted with the maturity framework was a way to evaluate how good a contractor was. Could they actually meet their schedule? Could they keep to their budget? Uh, and so this became used very quickly uh, in terms of evaluating the capability of contractors uh, Motorola picked it up in India and used it as a way to show how good they were to the rest of Motorola. Uh, so the rest of the Indian uh, outsourcing world uh, began using this to say, look, we, we can prove to you that we are good and we would be excellent partners. And as India started using this, it took off. We saw Telecom begin using it, Ericsson in particular, uh, a number of other companies, and then it sort of spread across the industry. So really that's the history of how the capability maturity model came to be. Uh, st starting really as an improvement program, catching fire as a way to evaluate the capability of, of bidders and contractors, and, and then being adopted widely as a general improvement model.